Dude, I don't know about you, but I am so fucking ready for this fucking movie, it is not even funny. I guess. You guess? What do you mean, you guess? You're not excited for this fucking thing? Figured you'd have at least a little bit of enthusiasm. I mean, people have been losing their fucking shits over this thing. I don't know, man. I mean, the original was just okay. I mean, other than Tim Curry, it was just kind of mediocre at best. Plus, you know how I feel about remakes. What? I said, remakes suck. Oh, remakes suck. Oh, damn. Gee, I thought you were talking about something else. Oh. Ow! What the hell was that? Take a damn look. Take a damn look! You know you can't read. What you are about to see, what we are about to see, is called an adaptation. As in a book that has been adapted to screen for our viewing pleasure. Not a remake, not a reboot. Remakes suck. Reboots suck. Adaptations sometimes don't suck. Re adaptation. What's that? Were you trying to speak? I just don't know. It's not a remake. It's not a reboot. It's not an adaptation. It's a re adaptation. And whether or not the original miniseries properly adapted the book is a matter of individual opinion. The fact is this is the second time the book has been adapted to the screen, so therefore it is, by definition, a re-adaptation. Dude, why are you trying to ruin this for me? You know I'm fucking excited about this movie. Look what you did. You made me drop the bat. Come on, I get the bat. Just trying to prove a point and you gotta fucking bring me down. As fucking usual. Can we just see the movie and fucking enjoy it? Please? Can we do that? Please? Look, can we just go see this fucking movie already? Because right now I got a fucking headache. Is that so fucking goddamn hard? I didn't think so. Let's go. Time for the movie. God damn it. Thank you. What? Hey, it's Dan. I don't know where the hell you are, what you been doing, but I've been waiting for like three hours. Just yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be there at some point eventually. Can we go? Thank you. Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to the season premiere of Fear Flicks. We just got out of seeing the uh, the new It movie, a uh, movie that I've been waiting for for a very long time. This is the book is what got me into Stephen King, made me a hardcore Stephen King fan. It's my favorite book of his, um, and I've, I've always been a huge fan of the miniseries with Tim Curry. Um, so I was really looking forward to this movie. I was really hoping that they weren't going to... Um, I was hoping that they were going to be faithful to the book while also not taking too many liberties and not going too far with a lot of the stuff in the book because I don't know if either of you guys have read 
No. The book? No. There's no. some really weird shit in the book, like really weird. Well, first, have you seen the miniseries? Yeah, that, I, that one I saw. Yeah. Or did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for a TV miniseries, it was very good. Um, but you, you well, I, I know you've seen it with Tim Curry, the miniseries. No, I've seen it, uh, Stephen, the, the original movie, but I never saw yeah. the miniseries. That's, that's the that's miniseries. A, that's the miniseries. Oh, okay. It wasn't yeah. a movie, it was like News a TV. to me. Yeah, it was a TV miniseries. Okay, whatever I, whatever I really, you, whatever I didn't know for the longest time either until he L said it. Little fun fact, the miniseries, <laughs> you know how in the, in the story, it, it comes back every 27 years. It's been 27 years since the miniseries. Bill Skarsgård took on the role of uh, Pennywise for this movie, and um, he's known for a few things, but he was relatively unknown. So I wasn't. I had no idea who he was. Yeah, he's. When you look at him, like that's definitely one thing that they that they nailed on the head with this movie is that uh, he, looking at Pennywise in this movie, you can't tell if that's Bill Skarsgård. Like he looks like, you know, somebody he could, who could be in uh, One Direction. Like you know, he's. Uh, he wait, hold on, Pennywise or. Pennywise, the new, this new Pennywise. Looked like he could be in One Direction? No, the actor. Oh. Going into this movie, I had kind of high expectations. I had heard all the praise that had been getting, you know, the, it had 99, or not 99, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes yesterday. It's down to 88 the last time I checked, but, um, you know, so I had kind of high expectations going into this, and overall, I think that I had two high expectations, um, and I think in the end, it was bound to disappoint in some way. In some ways, it did disappoint me. And I think the most, and this will be, this part will be like a spoiler free. Uh, so yeah, the, the the worst aspect of it to me was the the end. It was a little too, I don't know if over the top is the right, right wording, but um, you know, I think that the kids were awesome. The kids, I don't know what. what I'll agree. Like. I'll agree with that. The kids were amazing in that. Like they were hysterical. They were, yeah. Like you know, it was there definitely very reminiscent of Stranger Things, and everybody seems to be comparing this to Stranger Things. Um, it even has one of the kids from uh, Stranger Things, Finn Wolfhard. Um, I even said during it, it reminded me exactly of Stranger Things. When yeah, it's a trend now. All messing around. Or it might start a trend. And I mean, it takes yeah, place probably. in 1989, so it's, you know, something else, as with Stranger Things, that took place in the 80s also. It was bound to have some similarities to Stranger Things, especially, you know, with the plot and everything. Um, you know, a group of kids going up to try and face uh, a monster. And, um, God damn it, Dan. <laughs> oh, God. That'll be comments on, on YouTube. Yeah. Who's the freak with the V? Who's got the douche flute? No judgments here. This is our own losers club right here. There you go. So yeah, I think the the kids were the strongest aspect of this. Um, and Pennywise, I, in my opinion, he didn't have enough to work with as far as dialogue. He he only had a few scenes where he actually really talked to the kids. A lot of most of the other times, it was like him making noises and making faces. Yeah, I like some that of the facial little. expressions he made were cool, mm -hmm. and they were kind of freaky. But I think his Bill Skarsgård's performance overall was good, but. If it were, if I would have given him more to work with as far as dialogue, I would have given him more of a chance. Kind of like the scene with Georgie at the beginning, because that's really the, the scene that sets the whole the tone for the whole movie. You know, that was the scene that everybody was, uh, you know, waiting for, and that was what this whole movie was, you know, kind of based around and um, promoted around was that scene. You know, everybody was wanting to see, you know, what happens to Georgie. Because in the miniseries, you don't see it. I don't know, what did you think of, of that? I don't think it's really a spoiler, you know, to say that everybody pretty much knows that Georgie dies um, at the storm drain scene in the beginning. Um, what did you think on the, of the, the storm of drain the, scene? Of the newer version? Yeah, the storm drain scene in this. Well, if it's, if it, I don't, I'm not aware of the way the story goes in the book, but if that's how it played out, then I think that sense of transparency is probably important for a modern remake you know delivered to a modern audience so i mean i'm all i'm about you know accuracy to the book mm -hmm. and uh you know aesthetically visually i thought this that was probably one of the better sequences in the entire film it's a shame that it started so strong and kind of just had that downward trajectory yeah i'm his... gonna say something that's completely contradictory to both of you i that actually that scene lowered my expectations of this whole movie because really? the god awful CGI, it looked absolutely terrible. Yeah, the CGI was a problem. Like, uh, they, they got really lazy on certain aspects. Oh, like, yeah. You know, you, for example, like 
when the when the younger kid who was in the library and there's a book or rather a book a uh, a uh, balloon that goes through the room it's like this photoshop clip art balloon i'm like you oh, yeah, i know what like, you mean you guys couldn't have just well, i mean that was got that a was regular the, fucking balloon that was there what do you mean? The balloon that was floating through, that was a, a balloon no way. that was there. Yeah. No way. It didn't that look CG CG'd. to me at all. I thought it looked It looked like, like it was, you know, probably attached to something, like, driving across the floor, but it definitely looked like a real balloon to me. That type of stuff wasn't what I really had the problem with. It was when they did, like, I guess all of the teeth scenes. And yeah. Well, that's, anytime like that. I don't know if it's know. possible to do a... Well, that, but, you know, like, uh, the scene with Georgie, I know we're trying not to give anything away, but the scene with Georgie... That, like I said, the CGI in that scene, it was just god awful. Um, like, and that's why I just completely lowered my expectations after that. The teeth, I will agree on, because I think I feel like that was one of the things that the miniseries got right was it was always, you know, just prosthetic, sharp teeth. And there were a few times in this uh, in this movie where they had prosthetic yeah, teeth where and, he yeah, wasn't and that like was fine. his face wasn't, you know, that's a. You know, it wasn't like as extreme as it was in most of the other scenes with him. I do agree with you on the CGI and the acting points. was good. I thought that scene, the dialogue was spot on. I thought it was really good, but I don't know, just the CGI kind of lowered yeah, my expectations a lot. Yeah, because um, the dialogue between Pennywise and, Geor and Georgie, especially like Pen the way he, del uh, Bill Skarsgård, delivered that dialogue to Georgie was perfect. Like it was really kept you kind of it built the te it built the tension in my opinion yeah. really well every time he had the running or anything like that at somebody it just looked terrible oh you that could, stupid effect yeah they're going frame by frame well that well, too but i'm mainly forth. talking about like you know when it's choppy like that that's fine that adds a little bit of creepiness to it but more so i don't know it's like the scenery around i guess they wanted to make him look faster you know what i mean it's kind of they looked like they tried to jump him too oh you. yeah yeah yeah, that was one of the complaints that I heard <clears throat> from a lot of pe a lot of reviews that I saw was that uh, a majority of the the times when he you know scares people, <clears throat> a lot of it involves him at the camera, and you can tell that it's like you know most of his body is CG. Yeah, that's that's what camera. I mean by it looks, you know. <clears throat> and I, I it just took me out of it a bit. The cinematography I thought was great. The way it was filmed, I I really like you know not counting like the the CG and stuff like that, but the way it was filmed, the look of it the the colors it didn't have that usual kind of like filter kind of thing where a lot of horror movies are just like really dark they did put a really good 80s vibe on it yeah that's the other thing too was like it definitely felt like it took place you know it definitely felt like you were in 1989 and that combined with like the music i thought was great the soundtrack they did a good job with the music and this that it wasn't like you know too over the top in moments where there didn't need to be music and stuff like that like just let the scene let the tension build on its own, and then, you know, have it have it blow. I think really the the, the biggest downer for me was just the ending, the the final confrontation. I would definitely prefer the miniseries ending for the kids part. I preferred the way that ended to this. They didn't do a good job of explaining why they were able to kind of uh, defend themselves against him. And this is kind of I guess getting into spoiler territory. So you know, warning for people who haven't seen it. Um, we're gonna touch on some spoilers here. Now, uh, how did the miniseries one end? I kind of forget that it's been a while. Well, it's with, with the slingshot. Well, it's the slingshot, and um, Eddie uh, uses uh, his uh, inhaler. inhaler. Yeah, and he points it at him and says, "This is battery <clears throat> acid, you slime." And the idea of it is that he knows that it's you know a placebo, but it has ties into the, the belief stuff that he believes in that moment that it's real that it's real chemicals and stuff like that, so that's why he sprays it at in the face of Pennywise and it and it burns him and it, and it hurts him and then they're able to shoot him with the, the slingshot and it cracks his head open and everything. With this, I felt like they, there was too much of like them stabbing him with pipes and stuff like that and I thought that was like... They tried to get medieval. It's That was too much like a lot, so many other monster movies, you know? Like this isn't, this is like, this is supposed to be something that they have to battle with their their emotions and their you know their uh, you know their their will basically like you know I don't know what did you think of that final confrontation 
Did you feel the same way about like the, them stabbing the shit out of it with the pipes and everything? And I just thought it was maybe a little bit cheesy. You're right. It is a monster that's meant to be overpowered with you know emotions and friendship and, and yeah. teamwork and it just kind of felt like oh the answer all along was to beat it with a crowbar yeah let it fall down the well and then i guess 27 years from now we'll have to pick up where we left off it's like that just what a waste of time and they show like his you know head kind of opening up and you don't really know what's going on like why yeah. like that's why i was saying like they didn't do a good job of explaining why they were suddenly able to hurt it they did touch on it a little bit with that nail gun i think it was Remember the kid said it's not loaded. Yeah. The kid like, said it's not loaded, and then he popped it. And then it, that ended up being what? Yeah. Pretty much affected him. That's mm. like another example, though. That he, I, I thought I was expecting him to say something like, you know, I, I believe that it's real or something like that. Well, or, no. The thing is, he thought that it was loaded. He didn't think it was unloaded. Yeah, he, he believed it. Yeah. That's why he was able to. Which is why they kind of touched on it a little bit, without yeah. him coming straight out, pretty much looking at the camera and saying, "I believe that this is loaded." Yeah. So that's why it worked. Yeah, and it's just, it really kind of disappointed me that they went kind of like this basic, like, like a lot of other monster movies, you know, like I said, where they're just kind of trying to beat the shit out of it, and then, you know, well, you I mean, have the typical... kids, they don't really... The only thing that they understand is that he wasn't able to kill it because they weren't afraid. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why he wasn't able to kill Beverly. Um, yeah, they weren't able to kill, like, it wasn't able to kill them because they weren't afraid. Yeah. The scene with the meat locker that I thought was cool with the hands coming out of oh, the, yeah. the meat locker for Mike it was traditional and then seeing uh, you know Pennywise hanging in the the meat freezer that was really cool and then his eyes glowing um, showing him the deadlights I felt that the thing with the painting was freaky was, I, I thought that was that actually really cool that face was really spooky yeah it was I thought. they did a really good job um, with and it that. didn't look it didn't look like fake to me it no I mean it just it just looked like a painting it looked like well, a I mean, painting came, coming to life. Yeah, the scene with the the sink and the blood was was awesome. You know, I was and I I knew that they were gonna change it up because in the trailers, when they show a brief moment of that scene, it, it's all black. It looks like uh, mud. It looks like oil or something. So they like changed the color. Well, that they you know, probably the couldn't trailer. show that. Well, yeah, and it was <laughs> a lot bloodier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> like it was tons and tons and tons of blood. Like this was a very very pretty gory movie like there were a lot of you know part of me wanted ones. the father to walk in as they were cleaning it up and be like what the fuck are you doing yeah that and i don't understand why they didn't go through everybody's backstory you know they went through a couple you know mm. they went to certain people's families but like who was it richie mm. they're the one with yeah. the glasses yeah. yeah they didn't go through his yeah you know i thought that was stupid I, he was probably the most interesting character out of all of them mm. and to me anyway yeah and so that's why i kind of wanted them to touch on what he was like what his family was kind of like yeah, you know, his life. Because it seems like everybody that was getting picked on had like an unfortunate life. Yeah, that's like that's one of the things that brings them all together is that they all have you know these things in common where obviously they're each afraid of something specific, but they all have these troubled lives. You know where they're except for miserable. like sick, except for like apparently Richie because we don't know anything. Well, they did that with a bunch of like they didn't show Ben's life really, his home life. Um, Which one was Ben? The fat one. Yeah, but he was getting picked on because he was the new guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it still didn't really quite highlight his... Uh, he's like, hey, I'm super, super intensely interested in this weird, obscure subject. Yeah, so oh, yeah. much so that my walls are covered in all yeah. this information. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of a rare asset to run into that kid without yeah. any pretense or anything. I don't know. I felt like that may have been a little rushed. I do agree with people that I feel, in my opinion anyway, I think the two hours and 15 minute time went a lot faster than... A lot of other movies would have yeah because they kind of kept it there weren't too many parts that were like that I felt dragged no. I don't know if you either you guys felt no I felt like it was way shorter than it really was yeah mm -hmm. definitely like I said that scene in the beginning kind of lowering my expectations probably helped out a lot mm -hmm. because then I started thinking you know okay it's only uphill from here so do you think it went uphill from there oh yeah absolutely it got a lot better and it started you know brought my expectations back up and up not necessarily a movie I'd want, I'd go out of my way to see again. Uh, for remakes especially, I think it's important for a film to not have to lean on its predecessor uh, for that film to stand alone. I don't think that if this was a new movie and the original It had never existed and you just presented this to an audience, nobody would have liked it. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily believe truly that people would have... 
I actually kind of agree with that. Yeah, but it, it, it was more hyped up because it was a classic. You know, everybody was like, yeah, yeah but oh, the, that's the mini, amazing. The miniseries isn't a classic, though. I mean, what people remember from the miniseries is Tim Curry as Pennywise. That's what, if, if anybody else had played Pennywise, number one, it wouldn't have been as good. That performance, I mean, wouldn't have been as, as memorable. And number two, I think people would have tried to forget that miniseries. And, but I, I, I do disagree that I think, I don't think it, it kind of leaned on the, the miniseries at all. I think the hype did. The hype I did. Mean, had, the, had that not been out before, I don't think as many people would be seeing it. Fans of the original material hyped it up because they wanted to see a faithful adaptation of the book because a lot of people hate the miniseries because of how much, how many liberties they took and it's not very faithful to the book. Well, that's so, kind of what I mean too. You know, people, they were like, it's all of a sudden like this is coming out, they're actually doing it, you know, they're doing it right. That's what he means. Like, you yeah. know, it kind of leaned on the miniseries in the sense where yeah, but, everyone knew what it was. The original didn't exist, and nobody really cared much about this mini series or mini story by Stephen King. This movie wouldn't have been successful. Not as I, I, it I, might have been successful, this film, but not as successful this, as it is. Okay, let, then let's assume that Stephen King never wrote the book, and this was okay. a, this was a screenplay, and there was no other it series, and it, nobody ever knew what this was. Mm -hmm. If this movie just came out, then it, I would agree with you. That it would flop. And I'll, I'll no, tell you I why. I wouldn't say it wouldn't have flopped. I'll tell you why. Because it does not break the mold of any other blockbuster horror film released around this time of year that I've ever seen. I gotta it's, agree with it's that. It's super all jump similar. Scares. It's no, I completely disagree because... Hang on, isn't, isn't this the part where I say how, whether or not I like <laughs> the movie? Ahead. Go ahead. It's hard to disagree that this is a very typical horror movie with very, very, very typical tropes. Very typical tropes. Uh, you know, monster that you can't necessarily reason with, jump scares. They have to go confront it, you know, things right. like yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, that's been done a million other times. That's but what we're talking about. The, the difference, though, is that, number one, this wouldn't have flopped because the clown element alone would have made people go out and see it because, you know, the, fear, guess, the fear of clowns is... There are a lot of people who are afraid of clowns and who and there aren't exactly a lot of movies with a monster clown, you know? There are movies with a guy dressed up as a clown who killed, you know, slasher movies and stuff like that. Not something to this extent. And I think that what separates this from other typical horror movies, it does have aspects of typical horror movies in it, like you said, the jump scares and things like that. But what separates this is that the characters were done well, they made you care about the characters, which is what almost every other horror movie of this kind gets wrong. And that's why none of those other movies work at all, because you don't give a shit what happens to anybody. No, that, that's that's fair enough. That, no, that is a fair point. But I get what Dan's saying in the sense where if there was no miniseries, even if there was just no miniseries, would not be as well as it is now. It wouldn't be doing as well yeah. as it is now. Not as. P I'll Matt, agree. I'll, Matt, say, yeah. I'll say not can, as. Can I, I don't think it would have flopped. There I were, just think it wouldn't be doing as well. There were two people that I saw in the theater that are wearing a shirt with that character's face on it. So, what does that have to do with anything? You were brought to this theater by that miniseries. I'm telling you that. Well, because, maybe not Matt specifically. 10 or 15 horror movies have come in and out of theaters you, that you haven't seen. Although, to be fair, I don't think you under... I think you underestimate how, you know, the size of Stephen King's fan base. Because there are a lot, a lot more people, you know, I think thousands. you overestimate the quality of his movies that he's made besides Misery. Yeah. I mean, oh, you <laughs> They've all flopped. No, they haven't. Which one Some hasn't? Some of the best movies ever made have been Stephen King movies. Which ones? Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, Hold on, Shawshank and Green... I'm talking horror movies, like horror things. Hey, number one, he didn't do those movies. It has, nothing, it has nothing to do with those movies being any of those movies being bad because of his work. No, it's I'm not his saying work it's was that. In the hands of people of you know people who didn't know how to make a good movie. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You're kind of overestimating how well Stephen King movies have gone. No, I haven't. A little bit because uh, you most of his movies have flopped. I didn't say that. They didn't. Yeah, which is why I think people would have expected that with this. Had well, yeah. it just been yeah. even still, that's even why with the it miniseries, have done as well. Even with all. the miniseries, I, that's why we're kind of making his trying to make his point in saying that because of that miniseries is why people came out. But the but most I people was trying don't to like defend the you. The this. expectations would have been massively lower. Yeah, had the miniseries not existed. Yeah, and there hadn't been some bar set by. 
Tim Curry. That's what I was trying to say in so many words. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. That I agree with. And I just felt like it was so typical. The movie just felt typical to me. It felt like just a movie I expect people to go out and see. You know, once a year, every year, they make this movie. That's how, just the way I feel about it. And then there's me. I, I'm more of a casual horror movie person. I'm not a big stickler for things like that. You know, I'll say when a movie sucks, and I'll say when it doesn't. I don't think this one sucked. I think kind of I kind of agree with Dan in the typical sense, where where you're saying it's very typical. But I think they did a lot of things a lot better. Yeah. That's why I think this it does stand out more than normal horror movies would because they did a lot more better with storytelling. You know, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, in terms of the kids especially. Yeah. You know, backstories. They did make you feel for them, but like I said, you know, the, with the scares and stuff like that. And the way that it ended, it just felt more typical. All these kids share one big fear of growing up, and they're because they're faced with death all around them, and they have no choice but to, but to confront kind of the epitome of fear, something that feeds on their fear. The more they're afraid, you know, the more likely they are to not survive and to not be not be able to make it through. Mm. And the only way they're able to actually defend themselves against Pennywise and against it is by, you know. The, with the power of their friendship and the bond that they have and that brings me to one of the things that the biggest moment in the entire book that was cut from not cut but not included in the movie which everyone was wondering about you know only crazy people were wondering about it because you know they would have been this movie would not be in theaters if the scene that I'm talking about had been included and I don't care if you're, you're worried about spoilers you should know about this if you haven't read the book when they first uh, <clears throat> defeat Pennywise as kids, before they leave the sewers, the uh, they kind of Beverly comes up with a way so that to kind of cement their bond with each other. Do they um, all bang? Yes. She has. <laughs> oh it's my not god! A, it's not an orgy, but oh Jesus Christ! She had in the sewers. She has sex with each one individually. Are you fucking serious? Before they leave the sewers. And they, he, they just, oh he describes it. Oh my god. It, For real? He describes it vividly in the book. Like he describes the size of their dicks and how it feels inside of her. Now Richie had the smallest one. Wait. <laughs> what the it. fuck? I'm not, yeah. Stephen Are King, you you're a sack of shit. Me? And now I'm just now in this car finding out <laughs> that. I didn't Beverly fucking know that. Fucks all I, the oh kids. my god. He Let's all right blow that. a load in this no, no, 13 no, no. year old hang on, girl. Hang on. Hang on. I'm fuck? not saying the idea is that they're kind of they're going to be bound together in a way for the rest of their lives. Yeah, they're going to be bound together. All I know. Right. I know. Jesus I know. Christ! Because of the miniseries, I give it a B minus. Without the miniseries, I would give it a C plus. How about you? Overall, I'd probably give it a C minus or a C D plus. Just in terms of you know, I'm all about originality, and I just didn't see a lot. They did a good enough job with the characters and with the story that it made it, it pushed it above an average horror film. In my opinion, this was definitely better than the average horror movie. I feel like they accomplished it well. They casted everyone well. Um, the story, you know, is, I think they included all that they needed to include as far as from the book. So for me, I'd probably give it a, probably a B minus overall for me. I might change my opinion after, once I see it again, like Who gives out a D thing. plus? All right. I give I gotta, out a D gotta, plus. Gotta, <laughs> you both failed. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment and let me know, let us know what you thought of the movie. Um, have you seen it? Have you seen the original miniseries? Have you read the book? Click that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and get ready for more Fear Flix And uh, we can use this Fear Flix episode as the official kickoff for the Halloween season. Official kickoff for autumn. I'm Matt. Brian faith exactly uh, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time